Hello, everyone. I would like to share a devotional reading with you today from the book Reflecting Christ. <clears throat> the title of the reading is Reflecting Christ Through Our Lifestyle. Before we get started, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you for granting to us this privilege. Help us to understand what it means to reflect you through our lifestyle. And when you help us to understand, convict us so that we will be willing to do what we learned and what we know to do. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> I want to start off with a scripture reading coming to you from Titus chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. Titus chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. And this is how it reads. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of of the great God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous for good works, that he might redeem us from our iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, not a weird people, but a peculiar people. A peculiar people are those who are special, those who are different, those who draw a curious attention to themselves. Not a negative attention, but a curious attention. Attention that says, wow, what makes them so unique? What makes them so different from the ordinary? What makes them who they are? <clears throat> Let's read. This scripture teaches a very different lesson from that which is presented in the words of many who profess to believe the gospel. We're exhorted to be and to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world and to look for the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The scripture tells us that we have to live differently from this world. We have to live differently than the way we used to live. The way we should live now should reflect Christ and Christ alone. Some have made an objection to my work because I teach that it is our duty to be looking for Christ's personal appearance in the clouds of heaven. So they have said, you would think that the day of the Lord was right upon us to hear you speak in reference to the coming of Christ. And he would have been preaching on that same subject for the last 40 years. People have been doing it. <clears throat> and the Lord has not yet come. But we're still to reflect Christ. Because although he has not come, he is coming. The very, this very objection 
might have been brought against the words of Christ himself. He said by the mouth of the beloved disciple, Behold, I come quickly. And John responds, Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Jesus spoke these words as words of warning and encouragement to his people. And why should we not heed the words of John? The Lord has said that it is the faithful who will be found watching and waiting for him. The faithful, the faithful will be found watching and waiting for him. It was the unfaithful servant who said, My Lord delayeth his coming, and began to smite his fellow servants, and eat and drink and be drunken. The exact time of Christ's second coming is not revealed to mankind. Jesus said, No man knoweth the day nor the hour. But he also gave signs of his coming and said, When ye shall see these things, Know that it is near. Even at the doors. He bade them as the signs of his coming should appear. Look up and lift up your heads. For your redemption draweth nigh. And in view of these, he said to the apostate, and the apostles wrote, Ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief in the night. Ye are all the children of the light. And the children of the day, since we know not the hour of the coming of Christ, we must live soberly and godly in the presence of this world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. His people are to preserve their peculiar character as his representatives. There is work for every one of us to do according to his will. The rich should bring their means the honored, their influence, the learned, their wisdom, the poor, their virtue, if they would be effective workers with God. They are to bring themselves into a right relation with God, that they might reflect the light of the glory of God that shines in the face of Jesus Christ. They are to warn men of the coming judgments. They are to represent Christ to the people. Who are they? They are peculiar people who are reflecting Christ in their lifestyles, that they should be us.
we are to warn this world that Jesus is coming soon. And because he's coming soon, this world and us need to be ready, need to get ready. Don't wait to get ready. Get ready now. Reflect Christ in our lifestyle. Reflect Christ in everything we do. When the world sees you and me, they should see a peculiar treasure that one desires to look upon. Just like Jesus is a peculiar treasure that one desires to look upon. Reflecting Christ in our lifestyle. Let us pray. Our Father in our heaven, we are thankful that you even give us the privilege to reflect Christ through our lifestyle. Help us to take advantage of that privilege and to live the life that represents you, the life that gives you the honor, the glory, and the praise, the life that lifts up Jesus so that this dark, sinful, dying world will see hope Hope through us in Jesus because we reflect Christ. Forgive us of our sins and make us wholly thine so that we can be ready to go back with Jesus when he comes to receive us unto himself. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Until we meet again.